Hey, what's going on, y'all? This is Al, a.k.a. Fishing with Big Al, and welcome to the channel. It is Wednesday, and this is one day before Thanksgiving, so I hope everybody's got all your, your goodies, got all your family members, and every, everybody, everybody arrives safely so you can get ready to have a big eat on tomorrow, sit back, watch some sports, and then, you know, unbuckle the pants, and then watch the, let the TV watch you because you ain't going to be able to watch the game because you're going to have so much turkey in your stomach. And we all know turkey makes you fall asleep. So that is what will be taking place tomorrow. I know for me, I'll have the game watching me. So anyway, went out to the surf today. And it was um, a nice day for it. The wind conditions were kind of, they were medium. They wasn't high. They wasn't low. They were just right in between. They had some blow to it. Uh, the swells had like two to three foot swells. Water was still going out. So it had like a, to me, it was like an undercurrent. Um, I guess you can call it that because as I was casting six ounce weights on my 12 footers, they wasn't holding. If you cast out too far, it was traveling and it wasn't a lot of seaweed out there. So the water was just moving. Um, even though it didn't look like it was, it looked like it was a perfect day because I even walked out and I tried to walk past the gut in order to get past those waves and then try to cast out. And when I did that, it just made it even worse. When I came in, came back in with my rods and put them in my stakes, my lines just started traveling from left to right. They wouldn't hold. And like I said, I was using six ounce pyramids and they just wouldn't work. So I had to do a short cast and in doing so, caught some whiting and I did catch a nice size red, 23 and a half inch. So that was what took place today. I got there about 1030, between 10 and 11, um, and went for it and just stayed for a few hours to see what I can do. Actually, I was just throwing the shrimp off because I knew I had it and it was going to go bad if I didn't use it anytime soon. And um, I highly recommend, if you're not doing this, whenever you're using shrimp, if you got shrimp that is, you know, it's dead or whatever, pull that head off and just use the, the body part of the shrimp, right? There is a smell that comes off of it. This is the first time I ever really paid attention to this. Um, I usually do it anyway with the heads. Usually I put my shrimp on and when I throw it, the head just comes off anyway. But somebody hit me to it and they said, pull the head off and before you even hook it on. And I just never paid attention to it. Sometimes I would do it and then a lot of times I would just you know, put it on and the head will fly off anyway. But when they said that, now all of a sudden I realized why you pull the head off. If you're using uh, shrimp that is dead and it's not fresh dead, but it's, just, it's dead, it's been in your cooler for a while, man, that odor, that scent is so strong and powerful. It's on your fingers and you have to put your fingers back down in the water to try to rinse it off, to get it off your fingers. But that scent is so strong that it does attract the fish. So that is the reason why they say do that. I learned that. Um, like I said, you're never too old, too old to learn. And when they pointed that out, it brought it to my attention, what they were talking about. Because I just never paid attention to it. I just knew the shrimp had a smell to it. But since they said that, I was on board with it. Once they said it, I was like, you know what? Damn, I see where they're going with this. So I was pulling the head off every time before I cast. I wasn't even worrying about putting it on and then letting the head fly off. So that was something that you do if you just saying, hey, you want to have a stinky part of sh stinky shrimp on your line, do that, throw it out, and then that scent is strong. So it will attract uh, fish and you will get bites. And like I said, I did hit whitings and I hit that red. So anyway, let's go ahead and get further. Let's go ahead without further ado, get to the video. Y'all know what it is. It's fish on, baby. Like I always tell people, whatever lane you in, if you're enjoying that lane and it ain't bothering nobody and you don't have to worry about it bringing harm to you, Ride it, because you only got one life to live. Enjoy it. So with that said, let's get to the video, and happy Thanksgiving, y'all. Peace. up and what's going on everybody this is the pre-thanksgiving uh fishing day uh, i was talking to my uncle this morning and he was uh saying that
that he hadn't seen anything in a minute. And I had been busy. I had, had some things going on that I lost kind of track with uh, as far as coming out and getting something going. So this morning, it's after 10, and I decided, you know what? I checked the winds, and the winds weren't blowing hard. So I said, let me go down here and see what the surf looked like. And I like it. I'm impressed. So I like it this morning for what it's representing. So again, I got my big boys. I'm going to use my 12-footers with the pins on them. And I got three rods I'm going to set up. So one of them I'm going to use with some uh, fresh shrimp. Uh, well, not fresh. It's going to be dead shrimp, but I'm taking the head off uh, to get that scent going and then try to see if we can draw something. And I got the other one I'm, I'm going to be using the uh, fish bites. So we're going to use fish bites. And I'm going to be going with, of course, the Easy Flea. So I'm going to be trying that. That's the white and uh, flesh color, Easy Flea, or orange and flesh, whatever color they call it, man. I don't know. I just call it orange and white. But I think the pack said orange and flesh. But uh, anyway, so we're going to be going with that with a size 2 with my other pen. And then I probably set the other one up. And I'm going to put on the uh, Easy Shrimp. And that is the test to see if there's some black drum out here because this is November and the black drum run should be going. Um, I haven't seen any photos. I haven't, you know, there's been a few, but not in this area. So I haven't seen anybody say they did anything here. There was a pompano that was called a couple of days ago. Uh, a young man posted and said he hit like 20 of them. So I missed that day, I guess, because I, uh, I came out that next day and nothing was happening. So, but he said he hit 20. So who knows? And that's why I'm going to rig up that easy fleet for the pompano and see if there is some out here. Uh, right now, looking at the waves, I saw something just go across, had a nice size to it. It wasn't mullet. Whatever it was, it cut straight through the waves, so it was nice. So I'm going to go ahead and get this started, man, while the getting is good and see what happens. So again, y'all know what time it is, man. It's fish on, baby. Let's get it going. I got the first one set up. I got all my waders, so I'm going to walk out here, man, because the temperature is about uh, 56 degrees. Air temp is about 56. Water temp could be a little warmer. I don't know. I won't know anyway unless I put my hand in. That's the only way I'm gonna feel it. But these waders I got, they're really good, man. They keep, I mean, I had these for years. And these are actually hunter waders. I didn't even know it. I thought I was, I was in the fishing area looking for waders, and then somebody seen the front of them, and I, it looked like they hold shotgun shells. So they're hunter waders, I guess. But they work for me. So get this first one out. I'm just gonna toss it out to get ahead of these guts. What I can run into out there because I don't really know if the water has a lot of movement to it. If it does, it's not going to be good because my line's going to be drifting. I'm using sixes. Also, I'm using 60 pound. Well, you know what? No, this is 50 pound. 50 pound double braid with a single swivel clamp for a two size hook, which is big enough, small enough to catch anything and can hold on to the pompano. So he said a couple of days ago he caught 20 of them. So the pompano are out here, great. Let me set this other one up. Now I'm gonna put shrimp oh you know what? I'm gonna put fish bite on that one. Then I'm gonna set the other one up for shrimp because if it's shrimp if the shrimp are getting hits, I don't want to be in the middle of doing something when he gets a hit because everything loves shrimp. And sometimes man you come out here and fish will hit the shrimp fast and then they hit these fish bites and it could be whiting blues anything and hit it so we don't know so i'm gonna set this other one up and throw a fish bite on that one and i'm gonna put the uh easy shrimp on that one because that's the one that the uh that the black drum really love when they do hit and these black drum these these could be slot or they can be the, the massive size the ones that be traveling through I don't want to burn this battery out because I think I only got one battery. I don't even think I got the other one in the case. Do I? Yep, I got it. All right, it's there. But I still don't want to burn these batteries out. It's my batteries, man. I got so fast sometimes. All right, so far, so good. I just tossed them in, and it looks like the lines are holding. So either that means I hit a sandbar or something I can come up with is stuck in a sandbar. So hopefully. That is the case. Not too, not too shallow though. I wanted the sandbar to be too shallow. But I do want it to hold. I don't want it drifting because I'm gonna put three reels in. So let me get this other one set up. And 
that's gonna be the one I'm gonna put some shrimp on. And I'm just gonna walk out and toss that one barely into the guts. And if it's a black drum, reds, or anything, it's water cool enough that bait that uh beta come in and also fish will be in here too if they hit. So get that ready to go. I guess I should have ate before I left. <laughs> get them hungry things, man. I had some eggs this morning. So that's what I ate for breakfast. That was early this morning, though, between six and seven. So basically, now I'm hungry. It's close to lunchtime, so stomach's starting to growl. But you know what? If the fish start biting, you don't even feel it. You don't even feel that hunger, baby. So hopefully the fish start biting, though. <laughs> they will make me get up out of here if I get too hungry. So I almost got this one set up, and I'm going to be putting shrimp on that one. And like I say, toss it out. Grab a size four hook out the box. Hopefully, I got them. I know I got them. Uh, it's a size three. A three will work too. A good three circle hook will work. These are twos. And these twos, I used to love using them, but lately, I don't know. If they stop doing their job like they used to, they made the product a little weaker. But it's been a couple of times, even with the uh, the drag on, that I've been getting broke off. I mean, the hook is actually coming in sprung, or it's just broken all together. So. All right, if anybody didn't know, man, it's, it's always good to put your shrimp on. If, if it's dead shrimp, I like to take the heads off. Yeah, you said, I mean, it's going to come off anyway, probably when I toss it out. But for the most part, I just go ahead and take them off because that 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 uh, that blood and everything starts coming off, and that scent gets in the water and draws a fish to it. So I'm not ready to put the shrimp on. And yesterday I went out, and I was actually going to throw my shrimp off yesterday, and I had this area that I wanted to go to. So you uh, you can go back there, man, and hit black drum. And you can be in and out of there within 30 to 40 minutes, tops, on a good day when the black drum are running. If there's nobody there, you probably be out of there in 15 minutes because you can only keep five. But if there's nobody there, you can probably be, in, like I say, be in and out of there within 15 to 20 minutes on a good day of a black drum run in this area I know that I love fishing. I can almost, I can smell the shrimp already. I can smell it coming off already. So, see what's interesting in it. I can already smell it. I'm just gonna aim in between, right there, that first gut right here. I'm just gonna throw, toss it in there and see if it may be something in there. Nothing major, no one's have to He-Man throw it. Try to get it out there as far as you can. Just want to get it out there. Plus, you throw it too hard with these big boys, man, you almost take a chance of throwing your shrimp off every time. I bought some of that thread, but I didn't use it yet. I never had it before, so somebody was telling me to use that, so I went and bought it anyway. Stuff costs $4, and because I got caught up in the hype, I paid for it. Then after I looked at it, I'm like, man, I could have just got me some regular sewing thread. And use that. All right, so we got that one out, and man, it's got a good scent to it. All right, so here's a little bit of weed out there, little grass, nothing major. It's not heavy, so that's that's kind of a good sign. At least it's not saturating the line like it usually can. Bad days when this stuff gets on there, man, your rod will bend over, and you're talking about pulling something in. That's a workout. Slide this one down just a little bit and try to get it out a little bit further. Give it some room. All right, it's really not working the way I want it to, so I'm gonna um, reel these reels in and then I'm gonna walk out and try to get ahead of these waves because right now it's pulling from left to right, so I'm drifting. So I'm gonna try to go out, stake my stakes out a little bit further out in the water and put it out there a little bit and then throw ahead of those waves and try to keep them from, from grabbing my line. So right now when I come in, these waves are grabbing. So I need 
put it out a little bit further. We get ahead of it. Right now it's like a like a minor low tide. So the guts is what you try to cast into. But right now the water's too shallow to really cast into them. So I gotta go out, go out some, and then put my rods up high enough that I can probably keep these waves off of them and grabbing it the way they're doing it. And walk this bad boy out and get ready to go. I earlier about the water temperature. The water's warm. It's not cold at all. Shouldn't be anyway. It wasn't like we got a, a cold front that's been for days. But the water temperature's still pretty good. But I do need to get ahead of these waves a little bit. Try to get myself out there. bit further out now. See how that does, how that hold up. Little buddy standing by like the welcome committee. Y'all, these birds always come over here, man, just in case you catch something that you're not gonna keep, they'll take it. Hard heads, croaker. Anything, they'll grab it. Ain't got nothing for you today, my man. It's kind of slow. All right, so I tried to go out. Even though it looks good, it's got a, a, a nice, strong current to it. And it's pulling everything from left to right. So I tried to walk it out, get in front of the gut. But them waves back there, man, they're just, they're just slaughtering and, sl and slaughtering my rod. So my line is drifting left to right and it's almost like you might well just toss it short because that's what it's going to do anyway it's going to pull your pull your your line in and it's just going to be further down but it's almost like you just tossed it right out in front of you when it's like that so you might well just do a short cast and then hope for the best right in that gut there is a gut that got some water in it right in front of me right here so i toss right into that barely light toss just to see if anything's there uh, a lot of times i've come out here and just Days like this with my lighter rods, I've come out and just tossed it right into those first guts right in there. And man, there'd be some big fish coming out of there. So I might have to uh, shrink this weight and put like a size three or size four on it and see if that'll, if it'll hold. If it don't hold, then I'm gonna have to leave that six on it. But right now it's a strong, it's got a little strong pull to it. Like this current goes. Not a lot of seaweed, perfect day, perfect weather. Not hot, not cold, just right. But nothing's happening. I wonder if I'd have got out here a lot earlier this morning. I probably could have got into something. But who knows? If they're going to hit, they're going to hit. That's what fishing is, baby. That's on an easy flea. Might have to use this guy for cut bait. Uh, which one did I use it for cut bait on?
what type of bird that is. It's like he enjoying himself. My wife, she probably know. I'm sure it's a hurt she good on birds. That's what she like doing. Alright, check my small boy and get out here in this gut with some shrimp. Last week, boy, I wore out some black drum on this. But the area I was fishing, I don't film it because it's kind of like a private spot, so I didn't want to record that area. But yeah, five drum. That's that spot I was talking about. You hit them like it. on a good day when nobody's there. If they in there, you can get them within 20-something minutes and be out of there. It's like a pass, and they cut it. They got to pass through it for some reason, and they'll go through there, and you just stand by and wait for them. All right, there we go. We talking now, baby. We talking now. Yeah, you that real talking. Hopefully, I don't miss it though. <laughs> Hopefully, he hold on. That's on that shrimp. I said, let me get that small boy out there. If anything happened, if it happened on the small one, need to be able to feel it. Red or a black drum? No, it's not a hard head, that's for sure. Try to get him off that other ride over there. He's walking with it. Oh, yeah. Octopus hook. Shout out to my aunt. Uncle Phil back home, he talked to me this morning after what was going on. He ain't seen the video. So I said, let me go out here real quick, Bob. See if I can do something right quick. Oh, he got my other line, too. Uh, definitely got it. Nice little red. Come on in right quick. Come on in, buddy. Come on. Shrimp, dead shrimp. Nice scent in that first gut. Nice one. Right. Go ahead and get you ready. This is on the octopus hook, size three. So, let's see what we got here. I'm giving them a 23. Maybe a 24. I don't think it's a 24. He definitely probably like a 20. Maybe be a 22 and a half. Close to it. Nice. Pre Thanksgiving fishing, baby. Let's see what we got. Oh, oh. Oh, he said, let me get this cooler out. Right, we'll take it out. Twenty-four and a half. Nice. Twenty-four and a half red. Put them on in the cooler. I love, I love my fish. Oh yeah, buddy. Oh, that was on shrimp. They weren't even on the croaker. On the right end. Rise, I think. Red 
Bear's tail that I caught was blue too. So from what I understand, somebody said that if you see a blue tail on the reds, that means they feed it. So hope that is the case. But then I would like to get the black drums. I like black drums more than I like my reds. But they like this, take whatever. Uh, another little baby whiting. You were back there, buddy. Get you on the next one. I don't know if my camera is too close enough, but you see these holes all in the sand? These right here, man, is for the ghost shrimp. You can come down with a plunger. I got one at the house, but I usually use them for uh, when I'm catching sheep's head. Whenever I feel like, you know, doing it, I come down here and get these, and I use a fish head, uh, a sheep's head. I haven't caught them with ghost shrimp in a, in a long time, ghost shrimp, so. But there's a lot of holes around right now, so there's plenty of it. I should have brought my plunger. You that put everything in there just in case. Probably could have been throwing that out there and see what we got in the water. Just to mess around too. Well, I got shrimp, so gotta do it too. This one had some action on it earlier. I see it always bump every now and then. And that's the thing about fish bites. When you're using fish bites, unless something hits it hard, then he's on there. But a lot of times, yeah, just nibble at it and chew it up. And if something doesn't take it all off, yeah, just keep on messing with it until it's all gone. But I hit that red right in the gut, right out there in front of you. Toss it right in front of that sandbar. Oh, he was on there the whole time. There he is. Another whitey. These guys, these guys be out there mixed up with the reds, black drum. They hit just like everything else. You get them big enough though, he going home. If I catch me a 17, he on his way to the house. Whitey, fresh whiting is good. I grew up in St. Louis. St. Louis, my mom used to buy frozen. I didn't really catch too much for it, but we ate. Uh, we didn't eat, he wasn't gonna eat. <laughs> he was gonna go to bed starving. Yeah, fresh caught whitey. Yeah, it's, it's really good. I guess the black drum not doing anything because I got that easy shrimp on my other one. And it hasn't even moved. Go over here and check it anyway and see. coming in, don't look like nothing even on it anymore. It was getting bites, but nothing pulled it over. Put it back out there anyway, because this piece right here, if anything wants it, they'll come to it. They'll still hit it.
big enough, but too small still. Big ones out there than that. That's a nice little small biting probably. Appreciating this day, Thanksgiving, pre, pre Thanksgiving fishing. Steady hitting whiting. Got one nice red. But I can't get a big whiting. So, let you go back, fella. Buddy, I know you're saying, what you gonna do? And I just can't see myself giving you my wife. I think we got some action about to take place. I think this is gonna be a good one. Come on. Oh, I think I missed him too. Leave it out. Hey yeah, so I was fun for a couple of hours. I'm gonna leave from over here and I'm gonna head over to another spot to see if there may be some in this area that I like fishing in. Uh, this might not even make it on film, but this is that area I was talking about where the uh, black drum are at. And I'm just gonna go over there with my shrimp that I got, toss it, see if any of that action is taking place. If it is, good. If it's not, then I'm gonna leave the shrimp over there where it is and I'm gonna get out of there. Enjoy the Thanksgiving uh, that's coming up tomorrow. Go home, chill with mama, sit back, watch the movies and chill out. So anyway, man, y'all enjoy your Thanksgiving. Don't eat too much. Uh, have fun. Be safe. I'm out. This is out. All right, now that I'm back, got a nice 23 and a half inch red. So this was today, pre-Thanksgiving. Uh, the day is Tuesday. So went out this morning, not this morning, but a little bit after 10 and got him. So uh, he was the only one that really hit that came home. And basically, this is supposed to be a catch and release. But because I get so caught up in keeping my fish because I love eating my fish that I totally forgot that it was supposed to be a catch and release. And I did what I naturally do. I throw them in a the cooler. So, you know, not wasted because, like I said, I eat my fish. Now, I only keep slots. I don't mess around with uh, – I never waste a tag because I never keep fish bigger than the 28s. Um, really, I keep them under 28. Anything that's 26 and below is pretty much what, I, what I'm satisfied with because I like slots. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get this bad boy cleaned up. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know how to clean red, again, like I say, when I catch and I'm thinking about it, I'll go ahead and film it. And basically, you just want to go here. This is my method. Use my fillet knife, run across here. To the top of the head. Keep that point in there. Work it underneath the fan. Once I do that, turn them over, get my best angle. All right, let me make sure the camera's in there still. All right. And then you just want to go right where you made your incision at. Just like a doctor, baby. And then come out. And then run that blade right against his back. All the way down. You don't have to worry about scaling them. I know some people like to use their reds and uh, put them on a half shell. And that's basically what you can do with this one. But I always fillet mine. I don't do half shell. But I'm a fry man. So I like my fish fried. Uh, 
sure this is another time here now. He's just gonna run that blade right along his edge. I always hear people say bleed your reds and all that. I, I never bleed fish. I don't even worry about that. I just clean them. And then once I rinse them out and everything like that, we're good. All right. So, all right, we got that filet. Next thing I do, take my blade, grab his tail. And we'll just run it. And then there you go. You should have nothing but skin, which is what you got right there, to so let you know you did a good job on your filet. Cut that rib out. Take away some of the bone. Not all of it, but it does take away a great deal of it. So I don't worry about that. There you go. That's your filet for one side, right? Nice, nice piece. All right. Once we do that, throw that in. Do the cool. I gotta get rid of that. Turn them over real quick. Get to that other side of them. And then depending on how you do yours, me, I see it different. That's just the way my mind picks up on it. All right. So I go opposite of what I just did. I actually go from the stomach. And then work my way up. Then once I do that, I take my blade. Same thing right against his back. Just let it guide. You can see that right there? That blade just went right into that. If you can pick up on that. And then I just come up, take my blade in there. Right, right against that meat. Make an incision, come right out. Then I just go up the other way. Same thing, follow it just like I did the other one. You can see right there, you see how that is? There's the guts and everything on the inside of them. You don't lose any of it. Again, come up with my filet knife with the blade. Right, right against that skin. You can do the same thing with the trout, black drum. Um, if you catch big mangroves, you can fillet those, do the same thing, same way. That part is done. All right. Same thing again. I'm going to cut that rib out of there. And just like that again, two nice fillets ready to go in grease. Eat up, baby. So y'all know what it is. It's fish on, baby. This is Al, man, and I'm out. Y'all enjoy y'all Thanksgiving, and that is uh, catch and clean. So y'all enjoy your Thanksgiving again, man. Everybody be safe out there. Y'all take it easy. Till next time, see ya. Peace.